This is Barbara Ann Rosenberg, your roving reporter. And this time I've just returned from one of those roving trips to Indonesia, that 17,000 island, 3,000 mile archipelago on the other side of the world. Now this day we're going to visit Sulawesi, an island with its own charm. In the south, we start in Ujung Pandang. Before I got there, I couldn't even say it, let alone pronounce it, let alone say I've been there. Now I have been there. We left there, went to Tana Taraja. We flew to the north of the island in Tana Taraja. So you're going to see both of them. Then we'll come back to Ujung Pandang and you'll see some more of that and its charms. Come along with me, we're gonna have a good time. We have just arrived in Ujung Pandang. I said before I got here, it was hard enough to pronounce it, let alone to imagine that I'd ever be here. This is on the island of Seloise, which under the Dutch occupation was known as Celebes, C-E-L-E-B-E-S. And now, we're going into the fort that the Dutch maintained to secure the harbor. It's called Fort Rotterdam, and you can see it's thick, heavy stone walls, very imposing, and quite different from anything else in the city now because everything else is sort of friendly and with very Indonesian architecture. See the colorful Dutch architecture. It is still, by the way, it is managed by the Department of the Army. It's not under the tourism office, but it's still um, pretty secure, I guess. It's the Indonesian Army that has responsibility for it now. Quite lovely in here. This is the Mandela Monument. An absolutely magnificent monument to fallen heroes. You can tell they take their wars seriously here. It's very peaceful now and prosperity is just booming in this town, of course not as much as in, uh, in Ujung Pandang here, not as much as in Jakarta, but there's a great deal of building going on and it's the third largest city in this most, the largest Muslim country in the world. I forget how many million people, I'll tell you sooner or later in this program. There are these little tiny bicycle rickshaws called bikaks, and most of the people use them for local transportation. Uh, you can take about one my size, one the cameraman size and two little tiny Indonesian people. This isn't even a bad traffic jam, but you see how much activity goes on here. Let's walk over and see the kind of food stalls where most of the people take their lunch on a regular basis. Here's one of these little tiny food and they have all kinds of things that look a little bit familiar. There are uh, there are leaves stuffed with rice and fried something or other. What is this? Huh? Hey, what donut, is Donut. Donut. Yeah. Mas <laughs> Indian donut. Yeah. Yes. Indonesian donut. Indonesian donut. Okay. Thank you. And just as these people take their war efforts and their fallen heroes very seriously, so do they their religion. And this is the new Islami center that is being built. Absolutely beautiful, wonderful architecture and very exciting. The grounds, of course, are still in the making. They're just plant doing the plantings, but you can imagine how gorgeous it's going to be once it's all finished and open. We're standing here in the harbor of the Makassar, it was called. Makassar was considered to be one of the most romantic places in 
<laughs> all of the uh, Indonesia, oh, maybe a hundred years ago, in the time of the, uh, when the, the romantic writers from England would come here to get the atmosphere of the uh, pirates who came over from, uh, from Australia and the uh, all kinds of romantic act action took place here. These ships that you're seeing are the same design as the Dutch used and they're still building them. This is a big shipbuilding area. Ujung Pandang, a little bit of everything here in this harbor. No doubt about it. The guys have their wash hung out on the aft deck. They're loading lots of uh, beer over here, flour over there, uh, bricks in one of the ships. And as we're doing this, as you can see in just a minute, a focus, a crowd has developed around us interested in what we're doing here, what this TV camera is doing here. This doesn't look like 1995 architecture. It isn't any of the new stuff that's being built. This has been here around the port, these tin uh, structures and the traditional uh, sort of Indonesian gate posts to the harbor that we came through and paid our toll, paid our admission just to come out here and look, I guess anybody who comes out here to the harbor pays a, uh, an entry fee. And we're arriving at the Victoria International Hotel in Ujung Pandang. And look at this, they're waiting for us. They have my name right there on the, on the special board. I think that's kind of fun, don't you? Let's go inside. Nice to be in your hotel. Your name is? Kashmir. Kashmir. How nice to meet you. Thank you. We'll come over to the reception staff now, the reception desk. Very pretty, attractive, smiling people here in Saluizi, in uh, Ujung Pandang. And behind the desk, very typical fabrics from uh, Indonesia. They're all hand-woven ikats and just simply beautiful, very, very fine, finely woven out of silk. Well, we left the Tanataraja Airport with a lovely man who escorted us from there to this beautiful hotel, the Sahid Taraja, where you can see it's all very traditional architecture, beautifully planted, really a um, tradition mixed with luxury of the most lovely kind. We're going over to have lunch now, so we'll see you over there. As you can see, our names are on the board, they're expecting us, and it's really very fascinating. Of course, we've come a very long way from Philadelphia to Rantapau, the town is at, in Tanataraja, is the area on the island of Seluisi. And we're going to have a little tiny Indonesian lunch in the style of the Sahid Taraja. I'd like you to meet this gentleman who is the, you're the reservations manager, am I correct? Sales, sales, sales and marketing manager. Sales and marketing manager. And I, my word, can you think of a better way to sell this restaurant than to provide a lunch like this? Some Indonesian, these chips that are called what? Krupuk? Krupuk. And here's, this is a kind of, uh, it, it's sort of like watercress. Yeah and vegetables. I am goring, which is 
fried chicken and some fish, just in case we don't have enough to eat. Well, let's taste it and see how good it is. It looks marvelous. We're at the Buffalo Market in Rontapau. Now, I've been to places where they sell almost everything, but I've never been to a place that specialized in water buffalo. These are the beasts of burden that are used in Tanataraja, and you can see they all have rings through their nose. That's the way they're controlled. They're pulled along, and they're pretty docile, actually. They are the ones who plow the fields and become, they are the sacrifices for the funerals, and they are used for meat as well. And actually, water buffalo meat is quite delicious. I ate it once, uh, thinking it was beef, and it was the best fillet of beef that I ever had. Only later I found out it was water buffalo. So look at these guys. They are not bossy. They are not little docile cows. They are water buffalo. Part of the market where the bulls are lined up, the, uh, the water buffalo waiting to be bought, and the ones you saw out in the field were waiting for people to take them home. That's the specialty of this market. I've been to almost all kinds of markets, but as I said, never one that specialized in water buffalo. These flags are flying at the direction of the area manager, who is sort of like the mayor or the governor of the area. And what he wants to do with these is instill a sense of pride in the local people and suggest to them, they all, each one of these says bunk it, which means cooperate and do the best you can for your town and your country. What we're at now is a ceremony following the death of a country person. And the people here, the mourners, the friends, have gathered to butcher a water buffalo, which is always done to send the deceased person happily on his way. As a matter of fact, we were told yesterday that it has to be one buffalo and at least two pigs, no matter how poor the family is, before the person is sent to his final resting place. And you're in the country, in the deep jungle of Tanataraja, watching the authentic ceremony, as they call it. A ceremony to send a villager to his final rest. And this is the final more butchering and here on the palm leaves. And then the food is being brought over here for the women to cook. The, you see the mourners are wearing black sarongs. This is the only time that people wear black. Otherwise, they wear print sarongs wrapped around their waist and legs. And it's often the case everywhere. The women are doing the cooking and preparing the feast for as many of the villagers as will come to see this deceased person. Now, don't think that I go run around looking for funerals. I don't even go to my friend's funerals if I can avoid it. But boy, here I am in the heart of Sulawesi in Tanataraja and watching one of the most colorful spectacles you'd ever want to see. These are stone graves in Lemo were referred to as stone graves, and what you're seeing here is effigies of the people who died and have been buried in this cliff, for want of a better word. And the higher up the cliff you go, the more important the people are, so that grave robbers can't steal their gold and jewels. But it's kind of interesting and eerie to see these effigies of people and they are referred to here as objects. 
that's all the, the respect they get after they're gone. The truth is, though, it is a lot of respect, and this is the way they are remembered by their family and friends, and of course, it's an enormous tourist draw for people to come and see these effigies. We're driving, instead of flying, between Tanataraja and Ujung Pandang, or the old Makassar, as it used to be called when it was the Dutch East Indies. And here is some of the most exquisite scenery I have ever seen anywhere in the world. There are some places that are pretty. This is magnificent beautiful hot as the dickens we're right here on the equator just about we're Salawisi as we go down 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 the mountain the architecture is different the dress is different the people are different the language is different and what's your name Jung Pandang, or as you remember, Makassar. You can see how many things are up to date. Here, instead of a drive through McDonald's, they have a drive through bakery. And this is all part of a complex with another hotel, 
the Golden Macassar uh, and a uh, Pier 52, the bakery and a restaurant and the main street of Unjung Pandang, which is really quite busy, has a handcraft center, beauty parlors, lots and lots of uh, places to have your film developed. They do it in 25 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever. They vie for the right to do your film and it costs about the same as in the States. And here's a fisherman close to the water. I mean close, really close into shore. I don't know whether he's laying the nets or bringing them in, but he's doing something with nets. It's a very tranquil waterfront, whereas once upon a time it was a harbor for pirates. Even though we're in Ujung Pandang, you can see there's still a fascination with the Tarajan architecture. And there's the restaurant. I think it's maybe part of the Makassar Golden Hotel, right out over the water and with that Tarajan architecture on the roofs. They really are so striking. Exciting place to be, and my goodness, coming to Indonesia is, and Sulawesi in particular, is going to be the coming Are the gold shops doing a brisk business they sell almost pure gold, and th it's an investment for folks here. They buy it and sell it by the ounce, even though the workmanship is really quite fine. Now you've seen Sulawesi, or at least a taste of it you've had, in Ujung Pandang. You've seen the seafarers area and gone up to Tanataraja where they revere death and they have their people in niches overlooking their lives. I think it's a fascinating way of life. I hope you did too.